Charles Lytoller was a British mariner and naval officer. He was the second officer of the RMS Titanic and was the most senior member of the crew to survive the Titanic tragedy. On the night of April 14th, 1912, Lytoller commanded the last bridge watch prior to the ship's collision with the iceberg. An hour before the collision, Lytoller ordered the ship's lookouts to continually watch for ice until daylight. After heading back to his cabin to get some sleep, he felt the collision. He rushed out in his pajamas and was unable to determine if anything was wrong. And just in case he was needed, he retired back to his cabin with the thought that if there was something wrong, those on duty would very simply come get him. Well, shortly thereafter, the fourth officer rushed into his cabin and confirmed his fears. Quickly putting on his clothes over his pajamas, he grabbed his officer's coat and headed topside. After hitting an iceberg in the North Atlantic, he was the officer in charge of loading passengers into lifeboats on the port side of the ship. Lightoller personally made sure that women and children were the only ones allowed on the lifeboats. Firmly enforcing ship protocols, no male passengers were allowed to board the lifeboats unless they were needed as lifeboat crew. As a result, Lightoller lowered lifeboats with empty seats if there were no women and children waiting to board meaning to fill them to capacity once they'd reached the water. Lifeboats safely made it to the water, but the men never got into the boats. Believe they never even made it off the ship. When Lightoller attempted to launch Lifeboat 2, he found it was occupied already by 25 male passengers and crewmen. He ordered them out of the boat, and he threatened them with his unloaded revolver, allegedly saying, Get out of there, you damn cowards! I'd like to see every one of you overboard. He then passed the duty of loading the lifeboat to over to the fourth officer. As the ship began its final plunge, Lightoller attempted to launch a collapsible lifeboat on the port side. The collapsible fell onto the deck upside down. Seawater then washed over the entire bow, producing a large wave, a huge wave, that rolled aft along the boat and washed over the bridge. Seeing crowds of people run away from the rising water, Lytola realized it would be a futile move to head aft and dived into the water from the roof of the officer's quarters instead. He described the shock of the water as being like a thousand knives being driven into your body. As water flooded down one of the forward ventilators, Lytola was sucked underwater. He was pinned against the grating by the pressure of the incoming water. And then, one of the boilers exploded underwater and it created a blast, a blast of hot air from the depths. The eruption from the ventilator blew him straight to the surface. Lightoller climbed on the collapsible lifeboat that was now in the water. He took charge, calmed 30 survivors on the lifeboat that were with him. And as one of the tall funnels broke, it created a wave as it hit the water and pushed the lifeboat to safety. Charles Lightoller served as a commanding officer in the Royal Navy during World War I and was twice decorated for gallantry. During World War II, in retirement, he voluntarily provided his personal yacht and sailed her as one of the little ships that played a part of the Dunkirk evacuation. In a boat licensed to carry 21 passengers, Lightoller and his crew repatriated 127 British servicemen. Following Dunkirk, Lightoller continued to serve with the small vessel pool until 1946. On December 8, 1952, Lightoller passed away of chronic heart disease during London's Great Smog of 52 at the age of 78 years old. His body was cremated. His ashes were scattered at the Commonwealth Garden of Remembrance at Mortlake Crematorium in Richmond, Surrey. These are interesting things with J.C.